What it do, people? The State Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador, with another Rikers Island story for today. Now, this is gonna be a continuation of my story where I spoke about how I uh, got choked out by the top Trinitario and C74, and I almost passed out. Yeah, well, the aftermath of that situation was the box. But before I went to the box, something that hadn't happened yet, being that I was I was still in my first house in Rikers Island. I had only been on Rikers Island and in Five Main for all of <clears throat> three, four months, if my math is not off. So I wasn't that exposed to all the other uh, people inside Rikers Island. But after that day, this one random moment where honestly, I reacted out of emotion because like I said in that video, I was mad about court. I thought I was going home. I wasn't going home. And it just so happened that the top Trinitario happened to be on the other um, side of my house. And it just so happened that we collided like that naturally and organically it happened. Um, it could have went very bad after that. Um, I could have became an international played. I could have got stabbed. I could have got jumped by people who I don't know, which ended up happening anyway with the same gang, but through a separate situation. But what I noticed about that day is for some reason, my name started to begin to buzz a little bit. My name started to become a buzz a little bit. Now, up until that point, unless you knew me from outside in the street, I was only known in five main, north side and south side. More importantly, north side. But for some reason, for a couple weeks after this fight that I had, my first like big fight where I wasn't like getting jumped, but it was like a real like one-on-one -on -one fight, I popped that bottle off on him. You know, um, my name started buzzing a little bit and it seemed that when I went to court, a couple dudes realized who I was. Um, By this point, they was calling me Nas. So for all of y'all who be saying, oh, he sound like Nas or he look like Nas, which I definitely don't look like Nas, but I would say we got similar deep raspy voices. Actually, my nickname in certain places of C74, my nickname was Nas, like they called me Nas because of my voice. So the whole voice thing and the Nas thing, it actually um, has some merit. Like it actually was like a real thing. But um, certain dudes would be like, yo Nas, yo. Yo, you the Nas nigga, right? Yo, I heard you, you know what I'm saying? I heard you bop, 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 bop in the corridor. Hey, where you from? Hey, uh, hey you say you from Cortland, right? Yeah, so you. You GFC, or you, you know, Banco, you, you, you know, Melly Mel, you know, such and such and such, such such and such. You feel me? You feel me? Those more personal questions more so came from dudes from like the Bronx or Harlem because, you know, we always connected. Just like, like, Queens and Brooklyn always be connected. It's kind of like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I, I noticed that guys who, who, didn't know who I was at first. They would walk past me and didn't know me. So they didn't acknowledge me at all. But then when I started doing things like going to the visiting floor, when I started going to court and when I started, you know what I'm saying? Just doing whatever little kind of walks around Rikers Island where I'm running into dudes from other houses. Like, like if I went to law library or something, certain dudes noticed who I was. This is when I first started noticing that. Rikers Island is a lot like high school, you know, like it's a lot of gossiping, a lot of uh, chatty patty stuff. And at this point, when this first started happening, I didn't really know who to trust. So, so sometimes dude would be like, hey, yo, you the Nas nigga? Or be like, yo, you the Juju nigga, right? And I'd be like, it depends, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, who wants to know? Like I used to be skeptical, but my name was really starting to buzz, like of course, not buzzing like like the dudes who really like ODing. The dudes like like the dudes who I would consider to be like 
Rikers Island legends for that era. Like I wouldn't consider myself to be a legend because I wasn't I wasn't the highest, most active, oppressing dude. Like there's dudes who are real like oppressors. Dudes who are like really, really, really violent and like they was facing attempted murder charges and murder charges and like they didn't have much that they cared about. They had much to lose, so they was wilding. I wasn't one of those dudes. Those dudes are considered to me to be legends. I wasn't a legend. I was a dude who, who like I'ma always say, I filled the status quo. I was a dude who, who in a ranking system, I was like the nobility. I was the dude, I was like one of those dudes who, um, certain dudes, depending on where I'm at, certain dudes who had a higher ranking than me, they would come ask my opinion on certain things. Sometimes, not all the time. Just to get my opinion of it because I was one of sound mind. You know what I'm saying? I was one who thought logically. I wasn't one of the more emotional, extra violent dudes. Like I, 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 me advising other dudes who ran houses led to me keeping certain dudes from getting cut, stabbed, moved out of their house, led to me saving dudes from getting caught with drugs, all type of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what helped me be cool with people who had higher ranking than me. But anyways, in the middle of that time, I would say there was a two, three month period where I got invited to join every single gang that was doing anything in Rikers Island. Just off of that story alone and then and then dudes asking me where I'm from and then finding out a couple dudes I know from the town. I didn't I didn't got I was invited to be uh I think it's H A Trey Crit, um, all type of blood sets. Uh, YG from the Bronx. Uh, I was invited to be YB Young Bosses. If you know, you know. Um, I was invited to be. Uh, there's also there's also something called ABG. ABG. Um. Um, I'm cool with a lot of those dudes. Um, I was I was affiliated with that. I wouldn't say I was exactly ABG, but I was real cool with a lot of them dudes. Um, uh, no, it's not ABG. ABG was was a Brooklyn based thing. I'm talking about ATG. This was a Harlem based thing. I was I knew a lot of those dudes. Me and a lot of those dudes was cool because you know they from Harlem. All we do is all we did was slap box and battle dance each other and and crack jokes on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like we call them dirty, they call us dirty. But at the end of the day, it was this was all uptown. But I got invited to be literally every gang within a three month period of time. So I would like to highlight the fact that you could come in to Rikers Island or you could come into jail and you cannot be affiliated with nothing. But if people either want to manipulate you or they feel like you'll be a valid asset to they, to they set, um, they will offer for you to be in their gang, in their set. And you know, um, from what I know about certain gangs, like you got to fight or whatever, 30 seconds or whatever, little situations like that. But um, in jail, it depends on who you are. Like if they really just want you to be down, and they don't want to give you no hassle about it, they'll be like, hey, yo, listen, you under me. Like, that's exactly what it'd be like. Like, a couple dudes, like, like they ain't cool with me. They'd be like, yo, bro, listen, man, you under me, bro. Like, like just jack it. You good. And I ain't going to play with you. Uh -uh. But I always was a dude, especially at that current point in time, where if I wasn't jacking it before I went into Rikers Island, I wasn't going to jack it just because I'm on Rikers Island. To me personally, as an ego thing, I felt like like I was soft. Like I needed it for protection. I didn't want to be like the dudes that come in, they repping a the gang, and either they switch their gang because they're under pressure, or they worried about getting hurt, or dudes who repping a gang and then they about to go up north and they turn Muslim because they want Allah to save them from the perils that they're gonna face once they go up north to the max or the medium. But I just remember, like, damn, like, 
none of y'all niggas gave a fuck about me and now some of y'all is really like on my beef just because of a, a random act of violence against a dude who either you never knew before or you had a problem with him but you didn't do anything but I just so happened to do something about it personally and now you, you know what I'm saying, you wanna jack me. Um, for those of you guys who are foolish enough to allow yourself to go to jail and you're watching this video and you just living your life and you don't care how it go and you prepared for it and you think it's cool, don't succumb to the pressures of being in a gang. Like you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, stand on your own too. You'll feel more like a man not joining any gang, not succumbing to the pressure. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's still all about respect. It don't matter what set you are. Some sets, some sets, they'll find a way to cohabitate as long as there's a respect level. You know what I'm saying? Um, but all in all, the moral of this message is. Don't go to jail. This is just a story about what happened to me when I just so happened